Hello everybody and thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to wait a couple minutes here to let everybody get into the room. We're going to be working on um, cobblestones, doing the cobblestone pumpkin technique tonight. So we'll just give it a couple minutes. I see people are starting to come in. Hello everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to be doing the cobblestone pumpkin method tonight. We'll just give it a couple minutes for everybody to get in. I see People are already saying mystery box. That's good. My wife Janine is here. She's going to be watching for um, anybody to comment mystery box. And at the toward the end of the live tonight, we will draw a name, and the person whose name is drawn gets the option to purchase the mystery box that has a hundred dollar value for fifty dollars, and that includes shipping anywhere in the USA. If you're outside the US um, and you want to put your name in. Um, we will let you know what the shipping is and you would just need to pay the difference in the shipping. So feel free to type in mystery box. We're going to allow that for the first 10 minutes. And after uh, that 10 minutes, we're going to be cutting that off. Janine's going to put everybody's names in a bowl here. And then we will draw that name out a little bit later. So looks like we've got a, a good group in. Thanks for joining us. Janine is watching for the everybody who's saying mystery box. And I'm just scrolling down. There's a a whole lot of them already, but we're going to be doing the uh, the pumpkin cobblestone pumpkin technique tonight. So um, this is the mystery box. If you're not familiar with it, uh, contains some type of materials. I don't tell you exactly what's in there. I give you a hint, and I'll tell you that it has everything to do with what we're doing tonight. Um, and it's fifty dollars for anybody whose name is drawn. We will open the box and reveal what's in there. If they decide they don't want the box for some reason, we'll just draw another name out. And um, we've got it all set up on the website so that you can go in and easily pay for that and we will get that shipped out to you. So I'm gonna put that box aside here and later on tonight, we will, oh, and I just spilled the entire pint of <laughs> cobblestone all over here. Janine's looking like, oh dear God, that's dripping all over the floor. Um, so fortunately I got most of the pumpkin done already. I prepped it before we, we went live. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple other things. I had done a live a while back doing the dragonfly. So the same technique that we're doing tonight um, can be done on other objects. It's not just pumpkins. You can do it with all different colors. This dragonfly has purples and blues and yellows um, in there. And this was done the same way. It started out with the black, used the white cobblestone, and then stroke and coat on top. So I'm going to set that aside here. This was a piece that we did at a, a workshop at Mako, and it's a really good sample that shows the white cobblestone, the black cobblestone, and it kind of shows on the bottom one coat, two coats, and then three coats, the size chunks that you will get. And so what happens when cobblestone is fired, um, whatever glaze you put underneath, this one happened to be green, um, whatever glaze you put underneath where the cobblestone pulls back and crackles, you see that color coming through in the cracks in there. Um, the blue that you see on top of this is showing that you can use stroke and coat on top of the cobblestone and it will come out that color. So we're going to do blending with some oranges, yellow, and brown, and some greens on the pumpkin. Um, but keep in mind, you could do a blue pumpkin, you could do a purple pumpkin, you could do any colors that you want on this piece. We'll set this aside and, and so on the pumpkin you'll see areas where it's kind of yellow, areas where it's more orange, and then the crevices where we've got the brown. I'm going to flip the, the camera down here and um, I've got my, my pumpkin prepped here and so I'm going to show you what I used. I used the black Mako Foundation, the FN number nine black, and this is a gloss black glaze. So you can use other gloss black glazes by other companies as well, but I used the foundations black. I applied three coats to my entire pumpkin, and then I'm going to be applying, and I applied to part of the pumpkin, the white cobblestone. So cobblestone comes in white, and it comes in black. And the nice thing is you can use stroke and coat colors over the top to color this. So if you don't want the pumpkin to be just white, which this would actually look really cool in a black and white um, finish, you add color using stroke and coat. And we'll talk more about 
other colors that can and can't be used and why stroke and coat is recommended. Um, so I've applied three coats of the cobblestone to the pumpkin. I did the black three coats and then I've applied the cobblestone. And the cobblestone, now that I have spilled it all over the floor here, I'm going to grab my... No, that's all right. I'll wipe it up after. Um, the cobblestone gets brushed on, and I usually use a soft fan brush to brush it on. And when you brush it on, some people tend to want to brush it out really super thin, and you don't want to brush and brush and brush it out. You want to kind of lay this product on a little bit heavier. So I'm going to really load up my brush, and I'm going to lay... A layer of it on. I'm not going to overbrush it. The heavier you put cobblestone on, the bigger your crackle designs will be. And so you want to apply one coat, wait for that shiny wet look to be gone. It'll still look damp, it'll be a little bit darker. Then apply your second coat and if you want go to a third coat. Um, the thicker you put it on, the bigger your chunks tend to be. If you go more than three coats or get it on really heavy, um, I've seen some cases where the cobblestone actually pulls back on the pieces, and so I don't recommend going more than three coats. Most of the time, two coats is sufficient. gives you a nice crackle pattern. The sample that I have here, this was done with two good coats of the cobblestone rather than three. Now, the cobblestone, when it dries, it will get, and you can kind of see, if I hold this up close to the camera, I think you can see that there's kind of a crackle pattern in there. So as the cobblestone dries, it will get kind of a crackle pattern. If you put it on real heavy, sometimes you'll actually get where it starts lifting a little bit. Um, so when you apply the color, the stroke and coat on top of this, you want to apply it while this is still a little bit damp. So I put my third coat on here about a half hour ago and that shiny wet look is gone. Where I just applied the color here, you can see the difference of the wet shiny versus what we have on this side where it's kind of dull but still damp. It's not real chalky and the cobblestone isn't lifting up and pulling. So we want to apply the stroke and coat at that stage I'm just going to wash out my fan brush here. And I like to work with soft bristle brushes for applying the color on top. And the reason that I like the soft brushes is because it lays the color on better. Now we're going to work with stroke and coat on top of the cobblestone to add the color. And I get people asking, you know, can I use um, other colors like uh, foundations instead of stroke and coat for applying my color. And you probably could use them, but what will happen is cobblestone or uh, foundations aren't quite as pigmented as stroke and coat. So we're going to be using the orange peel stroke and coat, and we can get away with one coat of the orange stroke and coat on here. And we're going to immediately blend some yellow, which is the Sunkist SC6, into the orange while it's still a little wet. And then I've got Java Bean SC14 we're going to use to shade in the crevices. So I'm putting some of each of those colors out on my plate. And I'm going to work with my soft fan brush. And you don't want to put orange over the whole pumpkin because you want to work kind of wet into wet on the colors. So what I suggest in the workshops is you're going to apply the orange to like two sections of the pumpkin. So I'm going to apply it to this section here and I want to kind of brush it on and leave it. If I don't wait for the cobblestone to be fairly dry just still damp, but not. I don't want it wet. If it's wet and shiny, when I apply this orange, it's going to kind of pull the white cobblestone, and it's going to actually mix the orange with the cobblestone, and a lot of times that has a negative effect 
on your breakup pattern. So don't over brush and brush and brush and brush because when that cobblestone gets wet with the orange, it's going to soften a little bit. And if you continue to brush, you can actually pull the cobblestone and it's already starting to create a, a little bit of a crackle pattern. And if you pull that and drag that around on there, you're not going to get a good um, crackle effect. Then I'm going to take another, just a soft, I've got one of the, the lovely Menta brushes here, um, a real soft hair brush, and I'm going to dip into the sun kissed, and I'm going to kind of highlight on the highest point of the pumpkin, and I'm going to brush some yellow on. Now the biggest mistake that I see people making in workshops with this is they tend to over brush this. And right now this yellow looks kind of streaky on here, and, and that's okay, a little bit of streakiness. You don't want to completely, and I'm going to over brush this and blend this to the point that the yellow blends completely into the orange, and you don't want that. Like what I've done here right now, I've completely lost my yellow. It's, it's blended into the orange. So I want it to be a little bit heavier and almost streaky on top of the orange. I don't want to over blend it. And that's probably the biggest thing that I had people doing in, in a workshop last week is they wanted to over blend it. And, and, it, and it made sense because when I look at this, the yellow looks streaky. It doesn't look like it's, it's blended in, and that's okay. Then I'm going to go and do my yellow on my second section. Again, kind of putting it on heavy and a little bit streaky. And then I'm not even going to worry about washing this brush out, and I'm going to dip into my java bean, and I'm going to go down that middle section between the two sections of the pumpkin. And now the brown is a fairly dark color, so that I want to kind of blend in a little bit so it's not too streaky. It's going to kind of look like that. The reason I do two sections initially is because if I only do one section and then I go to do the brown in the middle, it's not going on to the second section. So initially you do two sections. After that, you just do one section at a time because now watch, if I add orange to my third section, and again, be fairly generous with the color, don't brush it out too much. If I brush on to this third section and a little bit goes on to the fourth, it's fine. Then I can do my brown, which is still in my brush, between section two and section three. And again, the orange is wet, the brown is wet, and then I'm, I'm not worried about washing this brush out because I've taken most of the brown out. I'm going to dip into my yellow, and I'm going to apply some yellow into the middle section here. Again, kind of streaky, kind of heavy. Okay, It kind of looks like a sloppy glazing job, but it's okay because when it's fired and it crackles apart, your yellow shows up, and I'll, I'll show you guys the sample again in a little bit and show you areas where the yellow shows up really well, and then areas where I probably brushed it out a little bit too much. Got a question? There's a couple questions I was kind of missing, so I might go back a little ways and maybe okay. people have answered them. Can cobblestone go to cone, cone 5, and then somebody said they think it's available in the and high fire and it's called mud crack. Yep, so this is the, the cobblestone that we're working with is the low fire version. And yes, Mako does have one that will go on to cone five six to a stoneware mid range temperature and it's called mud crack and they have white and black um, in in that version as well. Um can you show the bottles again that you're using? Yep. And then if you want another color as well, when would you put the stroke and coat on? So if you, okay, so the as far as adding another color is the question, um, to add another color to this. So if I wanted to add another color, a fourth color in here, instead of orange, yellow, and brown, say I wanted to add a little green in here, 
I could blend a little bit of green in here or whatever other color you wanted to do. You generally want to work kind of wet into wet like I've been doing on here. Um, the colors that were used are the Orange Appeal Stroke and Coat, the SC75. That's the main orange that we're working with. The yellow that I'm highlighting with is SC6 Sunkissed. And the brown is SC14 Java Bean. And like I said earlier, you can really, you can do purple pumpkins, you can do, you know, blue pumpkins, um, that kind of turquoisey blue is so popular. Last year I saw a lot of, you know, plastic pumpkins and things that were done in that turquoise color, and we did some, some techniques with that as well. Someone asked if the foundation's black is unfired, and another person yes said yes. Yeah, the foundation's black is not fired, so you're applying three coats of the, the foundation black, or whatever color you want in the background. It doesn't have to be black. So if I was doing, um, say, a turquoise blue pumpkin, I might do a real dark blue as my base glaze rather than using black behind there. You just want something that's going to be contrasting and showing up. If you're doing black cobblestone, you can do white as your background glaze or a light color as your background glaze. All right, I'm going to do just a couple more sections here of the pumpkin. I think you guys are, are getting the general idea of this. What you want to be careful of is that your cobblestone, again, doesn't get too dry. Um, don't put your cobblestone on and leave it sit for a day and then go back to um, adding your colors on top because that cobblestone, when it gets really dry, it may want to kind of flake a little bit. Um, when you're applying the top color on the uh, on top of it. I don't know if you already said this because I wasn't really paying attention. I'm one of those <laughs> students. <laughs> yeah. Would fun strokes work instead of stroking coats? So the reason, yeah. So fun strokes is basically Gear's version of stroke and coat, and yes, that would work um, on here as well. Anything, so I started talking before about the reason we use stroke and coat as your color versus something like foundation or easy strokes um, is because it is a glaze and it's very highly concentrated with color. And so you can get away with doing one coat on top of the cobblestone. If you did a glaze, say a, a foundation, and I was doing the orange on here, it wouldn't be as opaque with orange. And so... When you look at the finished sample, you don't see white. You might be seeing some reflection of the light on here that looks white, but there is no white showing on here. And this is black base glaze, white cobblestone, and then the orange, the yellow, and the brown. And if you look closely here, this is a section where I applied the yellow, and I get a good, nice yellow highlight. There's some good yellow on here. Um, when I go to a section like this one, you can see a little bit of the yellow there, a little bit down here, but most of that is just orange. And that's where I kind of overbrushed and tried to really blend that yellow so I didn't see the streakiness that you see on this finished piece. So don't try to blend these colors too much. This does not look attractive to me right now, but when it's fired, it will come out really nice with the darker color in the crevices, the yellow on the highlights, and the orange on, on that piece. So on the stem of the pumpkin then... Oh, and oh this another is question. Mold, this one happens to be a Clay Magic mold. Okay. Clay Magic has, there's a series of three whittled pumpkins. This one that I'm doing now, the, the small one here that's finished, that one is a Ceramichrome mold. This is the small of three different size pumpkins. They're tall, slender pumpkins, they're called. Oh, and can you mist it wet before, mist it too wet before the orange? Yeah, that is a good question about misting. So if the cobblestone gets a little too dry, can you mist it with water? And technically, you can. Um, but if you get too much water on there, the, the chunks of cobblestone, if they're starting to pull back, the chunks can kind of fall off and, and, and slide off of a vertical piece like this if you get it too wet. The, the misting will dampen it, 
and probably will hold most of it in place. But if you get a little bit too much water on there, then it starts to, to run and pull the, the cobblestone off as well. So I would kind of avoid doing that. I would try to work with it um, while that cobblestone is still a little bit damp. There's a few questions. Okay. Okay. Um, what would have been the difference if the appearance in your of the, in the appearance of your finished pumpkin if you had used the black cobblestone? So that's a good question. If I had used black cobblestone. So because I base coated this with black glaze, if I put black cobblestone on top of black, I would have a bumpy texture black on top of black. And it would, you'd be able to feel the, the texture, but you wouldn't really be able to see anything. So the reason I went with white on here was so that the black really shows through in the crevices. Now, I can also use stroke and coat on top of the black. So if I only had black stroke and coat, I could have put that on here instead of white and then put my stroke and coat over the top. But the black is, is pretty powerful. And the stroke and coat, you can see on here, it does cover the black. But there's more of a chance, if I don't get the stroke and coat on heavy enough, that the black will show through. And so that's why I use the white, because I'm using these bright um, colors on here. And I didn't want any black showing through on the, um, the raised texture areas on the piece. Which brings us to, is the finished one black or white? This is actually white cobblestone on here. Black base glaze, white cobblestone, and then stroke and coat colors on top of it. And that's what I'm doing on the, the piece here. And I know that you would expect to see some white on the edges, um, and you don't. If you coat this good with stroke and coat, you won't see white on the edges. And, and I had mentioned earlier that if you put this, the cobblestone on extremely heavy, I have seen cases where the color kind of the cobblestone kind of peels back in firing. So be careful that you don't go more than three coats. If you're a heavy glazer, probably just do two coats. If you're a light glazer, do three. But what you should, should see is, so this is three coats on here. This is one coat. Where I've got one coat, you can still kind of see the black through it. Where I've got the three coats, I can't really see the black through. So if you put your three coats on and it gets to the, you know, dry but damp stage and it looks like this and you can see through it, you're going to get very small breakup patterns. So on this piece here, this is what one coat looks like, two coats, three coats. And if you look really, really close at this, and I don't know if in the camera, if it's going to come through, but on the ones where I've got the three coats, let me get this black, in between the green glaze, if you don't have your base glaze on with three nice coats, that cobblestone kind of sucks up the glaze because it, it pulls back during firing. And when it pulls back, if you don't have three good coats of glaze, you can get where it'll pull back to the bisque. I still have some green showing up in between here, but I can see that it's a lighter green than what I've got on the edge where the cobblestone isn't. So, you know, too heavy of an application can, can create crawling or rolling back of the cobblestone, and it can also pull it back to the bare bisque or pull some of the color back that you almost get to the bisque. The black was foundations. Yes, the black is foundations. And then the cobblestone on top of it. So you can use any color as your base glaze. Three coats of any foundation glaze on the piece. And you can use white or black cobblestone on top. Like I said, the reason I used white cobblestone on here is because these are brighter colors. And I didn't want black cobblestone and potentially have some black showing through if I didn't get the stroke and coat on heavy enough. I have three coats of black and two coats of cobblestone. The cobblestone isn't cracking yet. Should I add another coat of cobblestone before the stroke and coat? So if your cobblestone isn't cracking before you add the stroke and coat, that's not really unusual. Um, I would look for, if you're looking at it and you're seeing nice opaqueness versus kind of translucent, if it's kind of translucent and you're seeing the black through, put another coat of cobblestone on. If it's opaque like this, 
I think you're good. The, the crackles I've had in workshops, sometimes the pieces get a crackle pattern and they're really noticeable and other times it isn't. But when the pieces are fired, it does basically the cobblestone like shrinks in firing and pulls back and gets that broken up effect. I see a, a question here while Janine's looking for other questions. I see one. Um, can you use cobblestone on a piece that's already glazed and fired? Um, that's a really good question. So the, the, as I think about this, if the piece is glossy and you apply cobblestone on top of it, um, it will take forever for that cobblestone to dry. Um, it also, the cobblestone won't adhere really well because that surface would be so slick and shiny that I suspect as that cobblestone dried, it probably would peel back and fall off on the piece. So if you, say you have something that's already glazed black or whatever color that you want, and you wanted to do cobblestone on top of it and refire it, I would suggest putting another coat or two of whatever your base glaze is. So if, it, if it's black, I would put more black foundation on there it's going to take a while for it to dry because the piece won't absorb the moisture and then do your cobblestone on top of that. So you would want to have base glaze that's not fired underneath the cobblestone. I don't think it would work well on a piece that's glazed and fired and is shiny. I guess I'm not exactly sure what things you've answered. Okay. Let's see what um, let's see. So I see a, another question here. Um, um, what cone oh. do you fire to? Could it be fire to five or six? I know you've talked about that as foundation of glaze or underglaze. Can underglaze be used? There's so, okay, so yeah, a good question. Can underglaze be used? So underglazes, things like Mako's fundamentals or Duncan's cover coats or Amico's velvets. So underglazes, and, and the terminology sometimes gets a little skewed because some people call stroke and coat and fun strokes, they call it underglaze. Technically, stroke and coat concepts, um, fun strokes are all glaze. They are a fritted glaze, where true underglazes are either clay-based, and Mako's Fundamentals and, and Duncan's Cover Coats, and Amico's um, velvets and their UG underglazes all are like a clay-based product. And so if you put a coat of clay or slip, think about this as I say it, if you brush slip over the top of a glaze, what do you think will happen? That clay isn't shiny, it's dull like bisque, and so your piece would be really dull and I'm not certain that the cobblestone would pull apart if you used an underglaze. So it's basically a fritted glaze that you do over the top. And the reason we do stroke and coat or concepts or fun strokes is because it is highly concentrated and you only have to do one coat. If you do three coats of this over the top of your cobblestone, you will not get a good crackle pattern. If you do three coats of a foundation glaze over the top of cobblestone, you will not get a good crackle pattern you will lose a lot of that crackle in there. Things like Easy Strokes or um, Paula's uh, Color Concentrates, those are basically pigment with a binder. There's no clay in them, but there's also no frit in those products. So if you used those over the top, um, it would be insanely expensive to do that because those colors usually are like one ounce or two ounce bottles and per ounce they are way more expensive than something like stroke encoder concepts or fun strokes um, and I I suspect they would work but those products are really not designed for large area opaque coverage usually you use them for stroke work or line work or shading um, so again I would stick with a fritted glaze product rather than an underglaze or a one stroke Cobblestone on a piece that's already glaze fired. Oh, I did talk about did. that. Okay, yep. Sorry. And um, 
this foundation a glaze or under glaze? Can under glaze be used? So yeah, and that's why I just talked about under glaze. Yeah, so foundation. I'm to yeah. Out which questions you didn't answer, and I wasn't Yeah, really sorry, Janina. Is, there's a lot of questions popping in. I'm trying to scroll back to to see and if there are any. What cone do you fire to? Could it be fired to five six? Someone said if you use the cone. Yeah, so the the cone five six. There is the mud crack for that, and I'm just looking to see. I know that this can be fired hotter, but I believe the breakup effect, uh, mid-range, color results, flattens with similar cobblestone pattern. So the, the low-fire cobblestones can be used on mid-fire and high-fire, but the white says at mid-range, color results, flattens with similar cobblestone patterns. So it probably won't be as textured. Um, I, when people ask like what this looks like and feels like, I usually tell them it kind of looks and feels like broken eggshells embedded in the glaze. Then I'm just looking at the black, it says the same thing, flattens with similar cobblestone pattern. Um, if I'm going to fire that to cone five, what speed would you cook it to and do you have a hold on it? So it, you can fire this just like you would normally fire your glazes. So whatever you're firing, your 06, I usually fire my, my low fire glazes to 06, um, usually at a medium speed. Um, you shouldn't need to do anything special with this firing. Okay, um, can you do this with pumpkins made from your clay puzzlers? Yeah, you can do this with pieces that you've hand built pumpkins or done clay puzzling or really any shapes. It doesn't, you know, you're not limited to just pumpkins. And what if you warmed it in the oven on low so it would adhere better? As far as I'm thinking they're referring to the, if you're doing it over a glazed piece, pop, possibly. No. Um, I wouldn't, if I was just doing this on a bisque piece, I probably wouldn't um, heat the piece to apply my cobblestone. Um, you can do this while the glazes are still kind of damp. I'm thinking that person might be referring to doing it with um, a piece that's been glazed and fired, like heating the piece up that they're saying the color will adhere better. And, and yes, it would, but I still worry that that cobblestone would just flake off of a glazed shiny piece. Now to get your, if you were gonna put more of your base glaze on the piece, like I suggested doing, and you were to warm that piece, then when you apply that black glaze or whatever your base glaze is, that would adhere and dry quicker than a piece that is not warmed. Okay, um, if you happen to glaze too heavy and it peels back, how is that fixable? Um, if it does peel back in firing, um, you can apply more of the base glaze in that area, let it dry, apply your cobblestone and apply your color and, and refire that. Um, but it's important that you apply more of the base glaze under there for the reasons that I just talked about. While Jean's looking for more questions, I just want to tell you guys what I did on the stem here. The stem, I just used Green Thumb SC26, and then I'm going to go with a little bit of the brown and add a little bit of um, shading in the stem. I can add a little bit of yellow if I want to add some highlights on here as well. Lisa, before with the farming thing said on a previously glazed piece, she said yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, all right. How long can the piece sit before it's before firing? That's a good question, and I was that was the next thing that I was going to talk about. They're, they're um, eager. To yeah, no, that's that's a really good question. You know what so. You're gonna say. The pumpkin now, as the stroke and coat dries on there, you'll probably see some crackle. You may or may not see some crackle in the cobblestone. Um, if you're going to transport this, or if it's going to sit for a long time before you fire it, um, you can put wax resist over the top of it. If you're worried, or you start to see crackling in there, or that the cobblestone wants to kind of peel away, you can put wax resist brush a light coat of that using a soft fan brush over the top of it. And what that will do is that wax will hold the cobblestone in place 
So if you have to transport it home to fire, or if it's going to be sitting for a long time before you fire a glaze load, put a coat of that wax resist on there. Once that shiny wet look is gone, so once all these real shiny areas are dry and dull, they don't have to be completely dry, what we call seminar dry, where it's just not shiny, wet looking, but it might still be damp. Apply that wax resist on there, and that will, if the, if the cobblestone wants to kind of peel away, it will hold it in place so that you can transport it and get it into the kiln. Um, and then when it's fired, the wax burns away, and then your colors all come out nice on there. Um, if you haven't fired wax in your kiln before and you don't have a vent on your kiln, um, the wax will smell kind of like a burning candle, but not a, a real nice scented burning candle. It'll smell like wax that's burning. So you may see some smoke coming out of the kiln. Don't be too alarmed. When I first got my, my first kiln when I was 11, I did a load that had some wax resist in it. And I called the person that I bought the kiln from and I said, oh my God, there's smoke coming out of the kiln. I don't know what's wrong. And, and she asked a few questions. And then she's like, wait, do you have wax resist on anything in there? And I said, yeah. And she said, that's that's normal. Don't freak out about it. It's the wax burning away. And so you will get some smoke. So make sure the room is ventilated if you don't have a vent on the kiln um, so that that smoke doesn't, you know, get irritating to you. <laughs> All right. If Janine missed any questions, feel free to type them back in there if we if we miss something. Um, and I, I see somebody saying, Sherry, you can use an underglaze as a base choice as well. Nope, that actually is not correct. You can't use, so I talked about underglazes. <laughs> True underglazes are colored slip. And if you put the cobblestone on top of that, that is the same as putting it right on the bisque. So you want to use a fritted glaze as your base color. Some people confuse products like Stroke and Coat and Concepts and Fun Strokes as an underglaze. Some people term this as an underglaze. Um, this technically is a fritted product. And I could use Stroke and Coat as my base rather than foundation. But Stroke and Coat per ounce is much more expensive than foundation and so that's why usually large area coverage I use my foundations when I'm doing smaller areas or color on top of the cobblestone that's when I use the the stroke and coat so and, and that's okay Deb don't it, it it it's it's very confusing because I hear a lot of people referring to stroke and coat as <laughs> underglaze a lot of people do that so you're not a you're not a bad student. I just go back. You can go back and watch it again too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening either, Dad. <laughs> um, I see Maria's asking how long should it dry before firing. Um, you it should dry to uh, a thoroughly dry. You don't want to put glaze pieces in the kiln when they're still damp. Um, it's best that they're completely dry. So usually waiting 24 hours to fire glaze pieces um, is is best with the cobblestone as well. And that, like I said, if you're worried about the color flaking off, I haven't had that issue, but I know years ago when cobblestone first came out, I had some pieces that that would happen to that it would kind of peel back, and, and so I would suggest you know using the wax resist over the top then. Someone was shocked to hear you first fired a kiln at 11. Maybe you should tell them the story of the <laughs> beginnings when you have time. So, yes, I, I got started very young. I started doing ceramics when I was 7 as a Cub Scout. And when I was 11, I mowed lawns for a, a summer so that I could save enough money to buy a kiln. My first kiln was $150. <laughs> um, and... Then a few years later, I bought a bigger kiln and a bigger kiln, and then I had multiple kilns and opened my first studio month out of high school, bought another studio five, ten years later, bought a clay manufacturing mm -hmm. company, and when I had way too many employees and I got really tired of dealing with employees and didn't have time to create, we got rid of the stores, and um, I went back to, to teaching and creating, which is what I enjoy doing much much more than dealing with personalities and driving a forklift and unloading semis and stuff. So uh, where's the mold from again? The one that I'm working on now, this is a clay magic mold. 
the slender one. This one is a Mako mold. Mako has three sizes. This is the smallest. And um, Clay Magic has three sizes. This is the medium size. There's a taller, skinnier one, and then there's a shorter, kind of skinnier one that has this this texture on it as well. Um, in your cobblestone color kits, are the directions on how many coats of glaze, et cetera, to do? Um, no, that's why I do the video, so mm -hmm. that um, you can actually watch it and listen. So it's three coats of your base glaze, whatever it is, whether it's black or whatever. I use black on here. Two to three coats of the cobblestone, and then one coat of the stroke and coat on top. <laughs> Someone said 150, <laughs> if only. <laughs> that was almost 50 years ago, peeps. <laughs> yeah. 50, no, it wasn't 50 years oh. ago. It was like 40-some years ago. 40 years ago. <laughs> <in the> 40s. <laughs> yeah, and you can do this, on, like I said, on, on anything. So if you weren't in here for the beginning, I showed the dragonfly, did a live doing this on the dragonfly as well. And on here we did the black over the whole dragonfly, and then we just used cobblestone on the wings. So the black that you see on the body and the black that you see on the underside is the, the foundation's black glaze, which is a nice glossy black glaze. Um, okay, if I was using stroking coat on a small piece as the base glaze, would I still need three layers? It, yeah, it's best to put three layers on because, again, the heavier you put the cobblestone on, the more it's going to kind of pull back on that glaze. So I had showed on this piece here how where I put it on real heavy, it kind of sucked up and pulled back some of that green glaze. So if you don't have that base glaze on heavy enough, um, it could pull back to the bare bisque or almost to the bare bisque. All right, I'm just looking to see if there are any other questions that we've missed. Um, I don't think we've missed anything. If we did, just type your your question in again. Um, so I think then Janine is cutting the names up here and she better get going on it because we're about ready to draw for the... the uh, talk about something. Yeah, so I, I got to talk about something now while she finishes. I was so busy with <laughs> Time for my job. Time. So she writes all the names on a okay, sheet and then she cuts them up. Ugh. Yeah, these employees, okay. you know, it's and hard to. Mud crack, can I use it with a bulk glaze and SC? And the molds are Mako? <laughs> the tall, slender molds are Mako. The, the wide one that I'm doing is Clay Magic. Um, I have Mud Crack. Can I use it with a bulk glaze and stroke and coat? So if you're doing Mud Crack, Mud Crack needs to be fired to a mid range color. So the glaze that you use underneath it would also need to be able to be fired to a mid-range temperature. So if you use a stoneware glaze, and that glaze is one that flows in firing, that probably wouldn't be a good idea to do mud crack on top of it because that mud crack could flow if the glaze flows. So make sure that whatever glaze you use is one that's not going to flow and move in firing and is capable of going to that cone 5-6 range. And stroke and coat can be used on cone 5-6 pieces and usually on the label it will say mid-range color results and like the orange appeal is no change. Um, some colors will change, so make note of that if you're going to be firing the stroke and coat to a mid-range temperature. Um, yes, I do sell Mako molds. We've got some of them on our website, learnfiredarts.com. And I don't know that I have all of these pumpkins up on there. If I don't, what we do with molds is... We build the shipping into the, the cost that we put on the website. Most of the time, it's it's around the retail of the mold, and we will either have them drop shipped from Mako, or if we get them in on an order here, we will ship those out um, from here. And so the, the shipping is included in the cost on the website as long as you're in the U.S. 48 or if you're in Hawaii or Alaska and it fits in a flat rate shipping box, so it would be a smaller mold, um, it would ship free there too. Um, Lisa asked if Amico stays put at mid-range, right? Some glazes will and some won't. And so um, I don't know that there's 
a guide or anything that that says specifically what glazes stay put and what ones don't um, I know a lot of Mako's do stay put but there are some like there there's some of them with the crystals and things I know definitely flow and and I've heard you know artists talking about certain glazes that if they get them on too heavy at mid-range that they do flow and firing so I would check with the manufacturer to see if um, the the glazes do flow or not. Someone wants to know if you can write up application directions. If I write up application directions for this, um, then I would be charging for that. It, it, you know, it's it's yeah, it just it takes time that that I really I don't have right now to write up the instructions and the videos are. Um, easy to do and th these videos too you can go back and you can rewatch these so the same link that you clicked on to get to this live that same link once we're done with the live that link will take you to the recording and it's even closed captioned and it, the closed captioning is pretty good on it so okay. all right um, oh. oh someone would like to say thank you to a Great for a great show in Melbourne. Oh, <laughs> yep, I see Lucy up. It was nice meeting you down there, Lucy, and hope you're feeling well. All right, so if you have other questions, feel free to type them in. Janine will watch for them. Um, we're going to go to the mystery box, and we will draw a name out. I'm going to set this pumpkin aside here. And she's got all the names in a bowl here. I'm just going to mix these up. <laughs> Yeah, and Daisy's up there telling us she wants us to come up and, and rub her belly or whatever. So I'm going to draw a name out, and the name that is drawn has the opportunity to get the mystery box for $50. And we have Melinda. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeanine can't read her own writing. It looks like... It looks like G R O N, but maybe the person will will <laughs> recognize this. If, I mean, I if, can go back to the beginning and try to find yeah, it. But if she's, like if you're in here and you recognize this name, <laughs> just let us know that you're in here. I'm going to open the mystery box, and and then you can decide if you want the mystery box. And if you don't, we'll just draw another name Sorry, for the mystery that. box. And sometimes when people have like three or four names, I just do like mm. the. So inside the mystery box, we have. Oh, Melinda G I R O N. Someone said. Okay. Melinda All right. Okay. So Melinda, let us know as as I open this up and tell you what's in here if you want this. Okay. Yes, that's me. All right. I see that. Yay. So inside the box, you've got a pint of the white cobblestone. You've got a pint of the black cobblestone. You have a pint of the white foundation, which is the base glaze for the black. You have a pint of the black foundation, which is the base that I used on the pumpkin with the white cobblestone over it. And then you've got an assortment of different stroke and coat colors. So you've got the greens, the orange, the yellow, the brown that we used on the pumpkin. I threw in some, some blues in here as well. And also a bottle of wax resist if you decide that you need to use wax resist with it. So um, I see Melinda saying yay. And so I take that as a yes that she she wants this box. So um, I'm going to flip the camera back up here on my face. So congratulations, Melinda. And um, we also have on the website, learnfiredarts.com, um, we have a kit that actually has, there's a four-ounce kit that has four-ounce bottles of foundation glaze and cobblestone. We also have a kit that has the pints of foundations and cobblestone and then it comes with a dozen different stroke and coat colors and um, you can order those kits they're on there they're I think item number two if you go into learnfiredarts.com it has the live event specials and then there's all kinds of other stuff in there too so there's the individual pints and four ounce we just got the pints in our pints were literally floating around with with FedEx for like two weeks the package just they didn't know where it was and then all of a sudden it showed up one day so the white phone the white and black we do have all of these in stock right now 
um, in the four ounce and in the pint. So mm -hmm. you can order those on the website. Um, there's all kinds of other great stuff in there as well. We do have all of the stroke and coat in two ounce and pints in stock. We just don't have them all listed on there. So if there are specific colors you need, just shoot me a message and we'll try to get those added before we get the other colors added so that you can order those. And we do have free shipping in the U.S. over $50. Um, any order over $50 and, and in addition to the live event area of the website there's a whole bunch of other um, stuff that we have on the website too. We have tons of, of different items and some cool stuff in there so take a look around and if you put in a $50 order we ship it to you free in the U.S. If it fits in a flat rate shipping box it'll also go to Hawaii and Alaska. If you're international and you want to order on our website, just message me a list of what you're looking for and we'll get you an actual quote of what the, the shipping would be to do uh, international shipping to Canada or any other country. So um, glad to be back this week. I will be back again in two weeks. I haven't decided yet what we're going to do in two weeks, um, but we'll come up with something cool. It should probably be a clay project. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will see everybody. A oh, a couple questions. Okay, yeah. there's a couple so questions. Did you say the cobblestone is only low fire? So the cobblestone is designed for low fire. It can also go to mid range. And and on the label, Mako says um, that it the color results flatten with similar cobblestone patterns. So it's not as textured and dimensional. It flattens more, but will get a breakup effect as well at a, at a mid-range temperature. And someone wants to know if you're gonna finish the pumpkin later. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've got volleyball tonight, and then um, I've got a pack I leave for a, a, the Waukesha show tomorrow, and I haven't really started packing for that yet. So <laughs> I'm not sure that I'll get it done tonight, but I'll try and, and get it into the kiln so I can show pictures of what it comes out uh, like when, when it's done. So okay. looking to see if there are any other questions. I don't see any. Oh, I see Lucy okay. saying cleaning greenware, doing a live on cleaning greenware. We did just, I'm, I'm planning to do one on casting and on cleaning greenware and kind of going through that process. We did just get new pouring equipment in, and so um, we're transitioning the old pouring equipment out to get the new pouring equipment, um, and we will um, do that sometime in the near future. I also want to let people know if you are waiting for the blue texture tool, which I know a lot of you probably are, um, that Clay Magic tool for, for adding the texture. Um, they were supposed to be in in July. They got stuck in the port in Los Angeles. Um, I did just get the news today mm -hmm that they made it through customs and the container is now shipping. So next week we should have those texture tools and be shipping out all of those orders. Um, clay extruders, I know a lot of people were still waiting for the, the Nidic Shimpo, uh, Nidic Shimpo extruder and we did get a shipment of those in and it covered every order except for one and it was a, an order placed in late July and I'll be messaging that person. Good news is more of those extruders are coming in the beginning of September so we don't have a long wait. So a lot of that stuff that we've been waiting for um, seems to be coming in and, and companies are getting caught up. Um, we do still have some items that um, you know just uh, we're waiting on and it's kind of typical of everything right now and there's raw material issues and stuff still going on so be patient with everybody you know there's there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of delays and things out there so thanks for joining us tonight you guys oh I see Raku yes the new kilns came in too Lisa and we will be doing Raku sometime soon as well I want to wait for it to cool off a little bit outside I don't want to be drenched in sweat while I'm out there doing the Raku live. So um, good night. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. I'll see some of you in Waukesha this weekend. Take care.